What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you remember a couple months ago, I asked you what you thought of these Clockworks handlebars. We're gonna go check out the Clockworks tent. I need you guys to tell me, the Clockworks clip hanger bars. Go Google them, actually I'll put a picture up right here. Let me know if you like these, I'm considering putting these on my bike. So as you might have guessed, today we're gonna be installing those handlebars on my 2011 Electric Glide. I've never actually installed handlebars on a Batwing bike before, so it's gonna be a little bit interesting, but I'm gonna use that to your guys' advantage and show you maybe what not to do. Before we get going, I wanna give you guys a little quick look at the bars. These are the 10 inch black Clockworks clip hanger bars. Uh, I went with the 10 inch because I don't want my hands to be above my fairing. I ride in the cold a lot and having the Batwing fairing for me is the best option in my part of the country and with the riding we do. We do a lot of long distance stuff, so uh, having my hands protected when it's cold, you know, sub 20 degrees even sometimes, uh, it's very beneficial for me to have a lower bar. I'm a very function over form type of person. That being said, I really do love the look of these bars. So they fit both categories for me, which works out great. If you're new to the channel and this is the first video you're seeing of ours, we are primarily a travel vlogging channel, but I do like to throw some installs in because who doesn't like putting stuff on their bike, right? This is a very involved install on a Batwing fairing. So what I'm gonna try to do to keep the pace of the video up is I'm not gonna show you every little detail, but I will show you the screw ups and the most important things you need to actually do this yourself. So hopefully you can use this video to kind of follow along while you're doing it by yourself and maybe it'll help you with your own install of these bars. I'll show you what's in the box real quick and then we'll get going on the install. Full disclosure, I've already opened this because I was like a little kid at Christmas and I wanted to see what my bars looked like. So you've got your main U portion. It does have a little knurling on there. And then in this box, you've got your knuckles. You've got some chrome end caps with screws. Looks like we've got some adhesive. And then you've got your grip portion of the bars also. First thing we're gonna do is remove our seat and then we're gonna unhook the battery. Since we're gonna be messing with wiring, uh, it's always a good idea to just unhook your battery. So once you get the battery unhooked, you can just separate your wires with a couple of towels. That'll keep the connections from touching. And that way you don't have to worry about problems down the road with the wires. Next part of disassembly, you're gonna turn your ignition over here and there's a little tab on, under here you can push up, push the key in, push the tab up, and the whole ignition will pull right out, just like that. There is a spring on the bottom of that, so make sure you don't lose your spring and set that aside. What you're gonna do next is loosen this nut here. Just crack that loose, pull that nut off. And there's a little keeper that's gonna slide off too. There's also a little plastic spacer underneath. And I always, when I take stuff apart, I always put it together like it came off and that way you know the order how it goes back together when that time comes. And there's just this little plate underneath. Should pop right up. Next, we're gonna pull this lower dash panel off. As you can see right here, there's a Torx bolt on each side. So we're gonna pop those out and then this should pull out. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna show you the one side. There is one on the other side. Once you get those bolts out, this dash just kind of pulls down and out. And you've got to get it up above your ignition post. It is kind of tight coming out, but it does come out and then it exposes the wires here. Since we're this far, I'm gonna go ahead and cover my tank with a towel. That way, if I drop anything on the tank, it doesn't scratch it. It's got plenty of scratches on it already, but <laughs> we'll protect it from any more. Okay, once you get the panel off, it is there's just a little plug right here. Just squeeze and pull, and that whole thing will just come right off. Next, we're gonna remove the outer fairing. There's a bolt here and a bolt right down in here. 
There's one, there's two bolts on this side and two bolts on the other side. Here's a trick I did a while back to help pull that outer fairing off. One little trick you can do to not scratch your fairing is you take some uh, Lady Devil's fuzzy socks and you put them over your passing lamps. You're gonna have to hit her up for the socks because I, I don't sell any of those. But it, it does help when you're pulling it on and off. It's not rubbing metal on that paint. My fairing's a little different than most. I have these little spikes to hold my windshield in. So I have to use brass pliers and a rag, but typically it's just a T27 Torx. That's what comes stock. So what I'm gonna, all I'm doing is I'm gonna loosen the side ones. Actually, I'm gonna take the side ones out. They're just a short stud. Then we're gonna take out the center one. And that'll let us pull our Clockworks windshield off. And if you have a windshield bag, now's the time to take that off as well. You can just leave this center one loose until you get all this stuff off, but I know my fairing's not gonna fall because I've had it off plenty of times already. And then once you get that done, you should just be able to roll this up. And that's what the socks are for. They kind of protect there. You're gonna lift it up just a bit, kind of roll it forward. And as you can see down here, I do have a Vision X headlight, but it is just one plug. A little bit different from stock. And then it's got this extra plug on here for my halos. You will most likely just have one plug where I have the two. So as you can see, we can, we're can we starting to be able to see our, our top clamp and our bars. You can tell we can't get to our back bolts. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna pull our passing lamps off. And then there's some dowels on here that this whole inner fairing should be able to lift and roll forward. And that should allow us enough room to get to our bar mounts. This is gonna be a T40 bolt. On your newer bikes, this is an acorn nut. Before I pull this light completely off, follow your wire up, find out where it plugs into. I'm gonna cut this zip tie here and I'm gonna unplug it. That way I can just take the passing lamp and get it completely out of my way so I don't have to worry about working around it. And I don't know if you guys can tell that, but they are, I do have a bar that connects both of them together on this bike. So I have to pull them both off at once and then it'll come off as an assembly. Lady Devil making a cameo. <laughs> Say hi to the camera. Hi camera. <laughs> Lady Devil says we need to cover our fender, so we're gonna go ahead and cover the fender. We've been here before. We need to cover it. <laughs> Alright, paint is protected. Thanks, baby. Yeah. Now we're just going to get this plate out of the way. Okay, so what we need to do next is roll the inner fairing forward, but we can't do that until we take all, our, all of our controls off the bars. So I'll show you how to loosen all that stuff up. We're not going to be changing any cables or wiring on this bike since I went with the 10 inch bars hopefully. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unhook everything and just kind of let it hang. And then when we put the new stuff on, you'll kind of see how it goes together. But I'm not going to disconnect any of my, my clutch. I'm not going to disconnect my brake line. So uh, fingers crossed. This is a T25. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to loosen this first and kind of separate that a little bit. And then I'll loosen these and we'll see what happens. One bolt here underneath. Now that that's loose, just kind of gonna hold everything with my hand. I'll loosen these up again. Last time I did bars, it's been probably 10 years ago and it was on a Sportster, so <laughs> a little bit different. All right, there's nothing in there. I'm just gonna kind of pull that down. This top part of the clamshell is held on by the wire. Um, I'm just gonna let that hang for now. And there's a zip tie up here on the bar. We're gonna cut that. And what that should do is when we roll the fairing forward, everything should come with it then. So these bars do have heated grips, so there's a wire inside here. We'll get to that in a little bit. This side's gonna be similar. I'm gonna loosen this. Actually, I'm just gonna take this all the way off. That'll pull that clamshell off. I'm gonna kinda hold the brake line in place. We're just gonna let this dangle. So that kind of releases everything there. Uh, then we can get to our fairing next. Okay, before we roll the fairing forward, what we're gonna do is follow each wire on our bars. We're gonna follow it back to its respective plug. 
in here. And then that way, all the bar connections will be unplugged and then we can roll that fairing forward and we won't have to worry about any wiring. So this left, the left bar I've traced back to this gray. It's connected to the fairing with a, like a little keyhole. So you just have to slide that forward and then this part will actually come out. So once we get the fairing rolled forward, we can fish this wire out. This is the right hand controls. Same deal, pull that up and forward. And that one disconnects. So we got gray on the left, black on the right. Pretty easy to not screw those up. Okay, so with this being a limited, we know we have heated grips inside the bars. So we need to find the wires where they come out the center of the bar and figure out where they plug into in the fairing also. Okay, I have three wires coming through my, my bar. I've got one that goes up to this plug here. Just connect that one. I'll try to get the camera in here. My camera woman's busy. She'd be handy right about now, but this is where the other wire goes. It's this little two wire. I'm guessing one of these is the heated grip. This one I believe is the heated grip, and I think this other one here is the throttle by wire. So I'm gonna unhook this little plug. I I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Now that we have the cables unhooked, we'll roll this fairing forward. So we're gonna lift it up above the dowels and kind of roll the bottom towards the back of the bike. And then the fairing itself will just kind of roll forward. There, it'll just kind of stay there. That exposes our handlebar mount completely with all of the wiring from the bar, right here. Okay, the easy part's done. <laughs> okay, we're gonna loosen all four of these bolts. This is a T40 Torx on this one. Some of these are like a quarter inch socket head. If you got a big belly like me, you can shove the bar in the end of it and then it just holds the bars from falling back on your paint. <laughs> Top cap will come off and the bars should lift right out. We'll have to take the bars to a bench. It's a pretty involved process pulling pins and everything. So that'll be the next part of this video. I'm gonna throw it all in the same video. So if you need to skip around a little bit, go for it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is try to get the wiring out of the stock bars. White and black is a smaller plug. I'm gonna try to pull it through first. That'll give us more room to get the bigger plug through afterwards. We'll put our big plug in. So if you're going to change your grips, now's the time to do it. I need to, but I'm not going to because I don't have any. <laughs> As you can see, this plug is not going to fit into our bar. So we're going to have to disassemble all these pins. That one I think I can get through. Okay, what we need to do is we're, we need to get the wires out of this plug so we can get it through the bars. So what you're gonna do is just, there's a little tab here on the side. Just take a pick, just lift up on that tab just gently. And as you can see, it popped out just a little bit. Just like that. Slide that sleeve back. And I would recommend you take a picture of your wires in relation to where like this is so you know what your wire colors are. Okay, once you get that pushed back, you can take a pick and pull that weather seal up. It comes up pretty easy. You just want to be careful you don't tear it. Once you get that out, you can slide it kind of back out of the way. I took a screwdriver and I ground it so it was just a flat rectangular shape. And the reason being is you got to get this white deal out of the center of this connector. And how you do that is if you look down the side here, there's two little slots. I took this one apart so I could show you guys. This one's a little bit bigger, but you've got a clip here and a clip here. 
So what you need to do is you need to like push that clip out and then this white piece will come out. Take your flat piece and you put it in the side and you just kind of want to push it. There's no way I can get the camera in here to show you guys. Okay, so it just popped. So then you can just take a, a pick or some, or some needle nose and pull it out. All right, next, I know you, there's no way you guys are gonna be able to see this. I'll try to put some light in here. Right inside there on the top and the bottom of the pins is a little release. So what you need to do is take your pick. I get that you guys can't see anything. Take your pick and push it right next to that pin and then just kind of push it in there and then reach behind and pull the wire at the same time. So it's gonna lift it, the tab up and then the wire will pull out here. And I'll try to get, get it to focus on this wire. You're lifting it up and then it's releasing it from that catch right there. So you just have to do that to all of these and uh, we'll catch up to you when we get there. Okay, so now that we got that plug off, we can hopefully feed these wires through this bar and get this throttle out. Just kind of push a little bit on the wires. I think there's a plug inside this bar, and I think if you yank too hard, it'll separate that plug and break it. Right there. I just had to unwire the big plug, and then this little black plug fits through. Guess that's it on these bars. We can set those aside. Next you have to do both your plugs for the controls, left and right controls. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and we'll catch up to you when I get all the pins out. Okay, now we're gonna lay our bars out. We're gonna set our wrist angle. All right, there's two ways you can install your bars, your grips basically. You can have them this way where the, where the handle is angled down just a little bit or you can put it another the other way where, where the bar is more straight. Um, I think I'm gonna put mine down just a little bit because that's always been a little bit more natural position. This is something you have to decide before you finish it all because if you don't like it, you gotta start all over. Uh, so we're gonna roll with it and cross our fingers and hope that's what I want in the end. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put these all together and uh, get all the wiring and stuff pushed through the, through the bars. There's a slot in the bar here and there's a slot on the inside of this. You can see on this side here. And what you're gonna do when you put your bar in is you're gonna line those two slots up. And there's also a slot in the bar here in a slot in here, and again, line all that up. The throttle side will have the notches, and you're gonna have a wiring hole for the bottom, and a wiring hole that you'll line up with this lock. So we'll put that in, we're gonna just put our finger down in there and make sure it's lined up good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install my throttle and we'll bring them, we'll fish them through and then out this hole. And pull this off so it makes it easier. This has three tabs on it and you have three slots on your bar. Make sure they all, they all line up. So I, now that I've got these wires out of the bar, I'm gonna hook up my control wiring, which we do by going underneath into the slot on the bottom of the hand grip portion. And then we're gonna feed it through here. It's gotta make a 90 degree corner with all these pins. It's just gonna be tough. Okay, now that we got most of the wires through, I'm gonna kind of slide my throttle on. So I'm not gonna tighten that on just yet. I'm just gonna kind of keep, keep it where it's at. 
we have to try to figure out all of these wires back through the bar. I'm just using a piece of uh, Romex wiring I had left over from my garage project for a fish wire. You can actually go buy cables for this that serve the same purpose. Okay, you got the first plug through. That was the first obstacle. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to get this big one through first. The left side has your heated grip wires uh, with the control on them. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what I did. I, it, it's, it's a bit of a struggle to get it around this bend here and this bend here. Let me brighten it up a little bit. What I eventually did is I had to take off the plugs for my heated grips. So this side has two of them because the other side plugs into this side and this side plugs into the bike itself. So I actually had to take both of those plugs off and what I did was I ran the two heated grip wires in first, and then I ran this through with a, uh, I just taped it up and pulled it through. You can find videos online how to do that exactly. It takes some time. Uh, if, <laughs> if you can't tell, I am in a different shirt because it is the next day. Uh, if you're new to the channel, it takes me a while to do some of this stuff because I, I do work a full-time job on top of my YouTube channel. So it takes me a while to get stuff done because I only have a couple hours in the evening to do stuff. Uh, that includes house projects as well. So um, anyway, that's pretty much how I did it. I ran those two wires in first and then I did the main harness, which kind of bull, bull nosed its way all the way through the bars. It is a bit of a struggle to get them in. There's really no way around it. Um, just to be patient, take your time. Don't force things and it'll eventually go through. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wire up my plugs again and get all the wires put back where they need to go. I'm gonna reference my pictures that I took and hopefully they're good. So we'll probably be here for a couple hours doing that. So we'll just cut to the next scene. All right, we got them all together. It wasn't that bad. It took a little bit of time. Uh, my colors on my phone didn't correctly uh, represent. <laughs> <laughs> what colors were actually on there. So I had to pull out my my service manual and uh, you know, just kind of look at the colors and stuff to make sure I had the right ones in the right places. And I've triple checked everything. You know, these three are the main, you got, you got your left bar, your right bar, uh, hand grips, whatever. So far, that's been the most difficult part is, is getting the wiring through the bar and then rewiring all the, all the plugs. I just kind of have these sitting here like this right now. I'm gonna go ahead and mount these up and then we'll sit the, sit the bars on the bike itself and we're gonna do some testing to make sure everything works and I didn't screw anything up. If I was to do this a second time, I would put one of the bolts in these little clamps just to kind of hold that bar from spinning because once you get those slots lined up, you don't really need to move it again. You can't, you know, the, the hand grip part of it, it can only sit the one way because the wires go through the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and put just one screw in there just to kind of hold them in place. You can see in the, in the pipe, you can look down there and make sure the slots are lining up. So get them lined up. I'm gonna just put a bolt in there, like I said, and just kind of Hold it there so it doesn't spin and maybe cut the wires or you know something bad can happen that way there's a lot of wires that go through there so they send some really nice chrome bolts for that so this is going to look awesome with the uh, chrome all the chrome hardware and the black bars on my chrome and black bike i think it's going to look really really good all right just like that we have a set of bars that are wired up that was way faster for you guys than it was for me. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of set them in place. And uh, once I figure out how they go, <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of lightly tighten the top clamp. And I'm just gonna kind of feed the wires in the general direction they need to go. And then I'm gonna put this top clamp on, 
Just want to make sure they're centered. So I'm just get them, getting them close to where I think they need to be uh, front to back. And I'm just kind of eyeballing my side to side. I may measure that, but it looks pretty good right there. What my plan is here is I'm going to put the seat back on and then I'll, I'll adjust where I need them so I can tighten everything in place. Some people will tighten the back bolts and then put the fairing on and then they can adjust it slightly some more and tighten the front ones. But there's not a lot of room under the radio to get to those bolts. And being as their Torx bit, I don't have a small Torx bit that I could use to really torque those down properly other than maybe using this little bit. So uh, I'm gonna try to adjust them before I put everything together and hope for the best. <laughs> One of the main reasons I picked these bars is so you can adjust your wrist angle and they are adjustable by spinning this bar like that. All right, now let's do the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and install the brake handle and the clutch handle, we'll get that done, and then we're gonna do a side to side to make sure it doesn't hit the tank, which it doesn't look like it's going to, but it's always good to check, and you can check your wiring that way also. Before I put my handles on, I decided I'm just gonna tighten the wrist angles down. I'm gonna hop back on the bike and just make sure I didn't move them while I was cinching the bars themselves down. Getting ahead of myself a little bit. My clutch cable is not long enough while the fairing is rolled forward. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the inner fairing back to where it belongs. My clamp is tight for the bars. My wires are generally in the area they need to be. And once I roll that fairing forward, then I should have enough cable to get up here. If not, I do have some slack in my, in my cable. I can reroute it whatever I need to do to make it long enough. These aren't, like I said, these are the 10 inch bars, so I shouldn't have to change anything, uh, but I may have to reroute some things so it get, gets a little extra length out of it. Okay, so what I'm finding is my bars are too far forward and my mirror will not go in between my cable and my bar. So I'm gonna have to pull that back off and then roll my bars down just a little bit to make sure I have enough room there. All right, what I'm gonna do, I have the, bars where I want them. I'm gonna put a little dot right here so some of it's on the bar and some of it's on the clamp. That way if the bars move I will know if it moves because what I've noticed is I'm a little off. I have a little bit bigger gap here than I do here. So what I'm gonna try to do is just move it over to the right just a hair and then I can line that back up to make sure we're golden. The clutch cable is just a little bit short, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the clamp on. What I think I'm gonna do is get it on and then I'll, I'll adjust the length on that just a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of ballpark where these need to be. This side, there's a little trick you gotta do. So when you put this side on, you wanna squeeze your brake handle because if, if you don't squeeze it, this little bar right here on the brake will actually hit the switch and damage your brake switch which if that gets loose and stuff gets loose in there it can affect your cruise control it can affect your brake light will kick on and off sometimes if that's messed up so what you want to do is just squeeze the brake handle a little bit and then line it up and then you can release it and you should be fine go ahead and put your clamp on now that that's somewhat in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook all my wiring up to make sure everything works. Depending on how long of bars you get, this could be the, the difficult process. These aren't too bad. I'm just kind of rerouting them a little bit to shorten them up. Okay, I was pretty much able to get everything plugged in. I got the left grip here. I've got the right grip here. Zoom out a little bit and kind of see where that's at. Just right here. Um, the only one I'm having trouble with, right here is my heated grip wire, right? And right here is the plug for it. And as you can see, it's about three inches away. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this wire out of this loom, which just runs up to here. And uh, I'll pull that out of that loom and then I'm just gonna run it straight down through here. And that should give me enough length, hopefully, <laughs> to hook up my heated grips. Uh, I didn't think I'd have this much issue, but I think since the bars are a little bit wider than stock, that's where I'm coming, I'm ending up with an issue with lengths. So uh, I'm gonna pull this out real quick and we'll see what happens. All right, that gave me plenty of length to do it. So now what we're gonna do, since I have everything hooked up, nothing is zip tied in place, the fairing's not bolted down. And the reason is we're gonna test everything. We're gonna test our radio, we're gonna test everything but the cruise control. Horn, blinkers, everything. That way you know if you screwed up your wiring. So it's a lot of work to get to this point to make sure you didn't screw something up. Surprisingly, everything works. So in order to do that, you do have to put your ignition on again, but I didn't put my lower dash on just yet. I wanted to check everything that I did on the bars themselves first. Once you make sure everything's working, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the bars all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and make sure nothing is pulling. So I'll turn it to the left, I'll get off, I'll go look. I might tie everything up on the right side when they're turned to the left. Then I'm gonna turn them all the way to the right, make sure no, nothing's pulling on cables on the left side, and then I can tie them in place. And what you're also gonna do is make sure your bars aren't hitting your, your tank, which uh, I don't know if you can see this, mine hits right there. So that sucks. I'm gonna have to roll those bars forward just a little bit to clear that dash. Okay, the bars are in position. I did roll them forward, forward enough where they wouldn't hit my dash here. What we have now is this brake line is hitting the inner fairing here. We can loosen this banjo bolt, just crack it, and then just spin it a little bit. We won't, we won't lose any fluid if we do that. Just barely crack it so enough, enough for this to move and just spin it down so it's like there. This side, unfortunately, the clutch is hitting the fairing. So what I think I'm gonna do is these are mounted a little bit high still for my, for my hands. So I'm gonna rotate my controls down just a little bit and that should give me enough clearance in the speaker hole there for the clutch to engage. So that's what we're gonna do next. <laughs> Wish me luck. I don't have these tight yet, so I should be able to just roll it. It has a little play there. Okay, that's all we needed was just to roll that down a little bit. Now I have plenty of play. It's actually gonna be more comfortable in my hand anyway. And one of the final touches is adding these to the holes. I'm just gonna put a dab of adhesive on each side, maybe four of them, and then we'll drop it in the hole. And of course, last but not least, you gotta make sure you put on your Clockworks windshield. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked what you saw, if you like travel vlogging, if you like installs, if you like maintenance videos on motorcycles, hit the subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up on this one, and we'll see you in the next one.